<clears throat> no greater skill than high placement finishes. Obviously the best indicator of how good you are. <clears throat> so we're going to go get us a top five by doing absolutely nothing. This looks like an excellent spot. There we go. Now let the skill begin. So much skill, I'm gonna put down my controller. Looks like another high-level player just flew by. Obviously going for super skill. To prove how good I am, I'm going to go make some food. Oh, brownies in the kitchen. That's good. Cool. Ooh, eat one of those. Mmm, that's good. That's delicious. <clears throat> Skill level only increases with each cookie. And the longer I'm away from the computer, the uh, PlayStation. Thirty three left, I'm slaying it again.
if you want to learn how to play like me, uh, you know, find me on Twitter and you can pay me to coach you on how to be the best player in the world. <clears throat> All right, well, maybe while we're doing this, I can read us a book. All right, uh, let's get into the book here. Okay. I'm going to read about the Texas Longhorns. <clears throat> Story time. The University of Texas at Austin is one of the largest public universities in the United States and consistently ranks among the finest institutions of higher education on the planet. It has one of the nation's largest library systems, world-class art museums, and a Gutenberg Bible. It is the largest employer in Austin and one of the largest in the state, generating $6 billion in business activity annually, all of which is well and good. But as much, or more than anything, UT is about one thing, Longhorn football. All right, next page. <clears throat> Before the kickoff of all Southwest Conference games, the players, spectators, officials, and attendants stand with bowed heads as the clergyman recites an invocation. Lord, said a minister before the start of the recent game in Waco between Baylor University, also a school in Texas, if you didn't know, and the University of Texas. We thank you for the many privileges you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of football. Okay. The Texas Longhorns made more history than any other breed of cattle the civilized world has known. As an animal in the realm of natural history, he was the peer of bison or grizzly bear. As a social factor, oh, that's interesting. As a social factor, his influence on many on men was extraordinary. An economic agent in determining the character and occupation of a territory, territorial continent in its vastness, he moved elementally with drought, grass, blizzards, out of the Arctic and the wind from the south. However supplanted or however disparaged by evolving standards or generations, he will remain a bedrock on which the history of cow country of America is founded. J. Frank Dobby, the Longhorns. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, skip the preface. Yeah, no. Let's get right into it, actually. Ooh, 25 left. Slaying it again, boys. Texans love stories about oil fortunes, won and lost and won again. About one riot, one ranger of cattle drives, and war heroes like Audie Murphy and Gritty. Go it alone, businessmen who defy common sense and conventional wisdom to amass wealth that would shame a sheik. <laughs> Texans are suckers for cliches. Stetsons and Tony Lama, ostrich skin boots and silver belt buckles, the size of paperback novels and monster pickups with enough firepower draping from the gun rack to defend Wake Island Top. Eh, I ain't worried about that. Topped off by matching God Bless John Wayne and Let the Yankee Masters Freeze on the Dark bumper stickers. Texans love to remind people that Texas possesses, produces, or lays claim to the most... <laughs> Still in the circle. Claim to the most this, the biggest that, the best of, damn near everything truly important, except possibly fresh water or clean air. <laughs> oh, God. Though such bragging gets tiresome, it isn't all bluster. Oil from the East Texas fields fueled the war machine that crushed the Japanese and the Germans in World War II. Texas real estate moguls gobbled up cotton farms. The mesquite breaks the grassy swamps and turned them into Dallas, Austin, and Houston. 
19 left. Another banger, boys. The state survived Goliad and the Alamo, the Civil War, Reconstruction, the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, and Great Drought of the early 1950s. We survived Ma and Pa Ferguson, Papio, Daniel, Marvin Zindler, John Travolta as an ur urban cowboy, and Larry Hagman as J.R. Ewing from the famous show Dallas. We survived the nation's fury over assassination of a popular young president on our streets, as well as the escalation of an unpopular war in a faraway land, the Texans who seceded them. We will survive the nation's rancor with the son of a Yankee transplant from Connecticut for leading the country into another suspicious military venture. What the fuck is going on here? Texas survives as literature every other year. We have survived the whims of time and place and mother nature because Texas is more of a geographical or demographical entity. It is a state of consciousness built on a collection of myths and legends of tall tales. A sense of pride in who we are and what we are about. Rugged individualists and mavericks, wheelers, dealers, and super patrons, or patriots, I'm sorry, who build global conglomerates from scratch. When we aren't rescuing American hostages in Iran or facing down freckless bureaucrats still in the circle, bitches, all a flutter over the fate of a snail darter or cave beetle. One moment while I sip my beverage. <clears throat> I'm a little parched from reading, boys. The stitching that binds us, hippies and rednecks, Catholics and Protestants, shrimpers and soccer moms, and short order cooks, Hyde Park librarians and Highland Park conservatives, and then Joel and Steen, or Willie Nelson, or cheese enchiladas, although I do love cheese enchiladas, or chili cook-offs, also one of my faves, or Mary Kay Cosmetics. It isn't black, gold, or white lightning. It isn't the lure of the wide open spaces of the love of grain-fed beef or the cotton-eyed Joe. <clears throat> It's sports peewee through professionalism. In particular, it's football. By and large, Texans love fishing and hunting and outlet malls and chicken fried steak, but football is the state's true passion. We live and breathe it. With all due respect to Tim Duncan, Roger Clemens, Lance Armstrong, and Byron Nelson, football eats first. It's important as weather. It's the state lingua franca. And the lubricant of conversations between the high and low, the right and left, the ins and outs, old men congregate on Saturday morning at the local pit grill to nitpick decisions made under the stadium. Lights and night before, folks who wouldn't attend a school board meeting if every kid in the country flunked the TAKS. Uh, must be kind of old. I don't think we... I don't know if they spelled the tax test right. We'll line up for hours to weigh in on the merits of hiring or firing a linebacker coach. Football is Texas' unofficial religion, and our faith in this team or the transcends superficiality of reason, logic, experience, or last year's season record. <laughs> Don't we all know that to be true? We are awed by the pageantry, rituals, sacred color, hymns, and holy mysteries of the sport. Our trust in never wavers, never wanes, despite the absence of tangible evidence. A recent playoff berth, for example, we know who and what we are. The mighty this, the mighty that, the chosen few. Oh, seven left. Now tell you, tell me that ain't religion, folks. And this religion's grand cathedral is located not in Dallas or Houston or College Station. Fuck the Aggies. But rather on the campus of the University of Texas in Austin, also known as the 40 Acres, the glorious, glorious 40 Acres. It is a stadium dedicated to soldiers who lost their lives and to a coach who was born in Oklahoma, but whose name has become synonymous with Texas as Houston or Bowie or LBJ. Any discussion of the importance of football in Texas begins and ends with the Texas Longhorns. That may be hard for Aggies or Cowboys or the Permian Panthers to accept, but it's true. In Texas, football means Texas Longhorn football, the third winningest program in NCAA history behind Michigan and Notre Dame, the only three schools with 900 wins. Winners of four national championships and countless conference and bowl crowns. In Texas, football means Dana Bible and Derek K. Royal. James Saxton and Street to Peschel. 
It means Bobby Lane and Tommy Notice and Impossible Catch, the Kerns Tips on the Humble Oil Radio Network. It means Hook'em Horns and Bevo and Old Smokey and Big Bertha, the world's largest bass drum. It means Nakona Nugget and the Tyler Rose. It means Ricky and Rosie. It means Vince Young and Mac Brown. In Texas, football means Saturday afternoons under the oaks of Shaw Garden or the awning at the Posse East or sitting on the bed of a pickup in one of those state lots east of campus. Left hand gripping her cold shiner bock, right hand thrusting forth, index finger and pinky extended, middle and ring finger tucked under the thumb as we belt out Texas fight. It means the eyes of Texas, and it is the stuff of heroes and myths and legends worthy of the great state of Texas. My generation didn't grow up in the internet chat rooms or on the clock cable TV or sports talk radio. My family's called so RCA, black and white television, or three, she received three channels. And only one of them had permission to broadcast regular season football. The UT games against OU and the Aggies were generally televised and st- Oh, here we go, five left. And the Cotton Bowl occasionally determined college football's national championship. So we watched those games, although the image was often so grainy that the game seemed as if they were being played during the dust storm. As for the other six or seven games each season, we were forced to read the Sunday morning newspaper to learn whether or how the Longhorns won. In many ways, I began writing a history of UT football as a boy, clipping wire services articles I gleaned from the hometown daily newspaper or the Sports Illustrator to Texas Football Magazine. Thus, the backdrop of this book is drawn from memories and articles I've collected over the years as a die-hard Longhorn fan. Beyond that, I am greatly inhibited to the following. Ben Grelot of Austin Hill Astoria Center, the staff of the city... Uh, Susan E. Sigmund, staff of the UT... Oh, uh, actually, hold on. I need to text my wife to remind her of something. Uh, how, how are we doing, boys? I'm not paying attention. Oh, okay. Still looking good. Paperwork. Reminder. Love you, boo. LOL. Oh, uh-huh. well, we might have to get a little serious here, folks. Let me uh, blow through this. Uh... Well, that I am, uh, well, there's a bunch of names. I'm particularly grateful to... Uh, okay, lots of names, lots of names. Uh, uh, uh. All right, well... All right. Uh, let's try to get this win, boys. Shooting my tree. had that guys thought we had that top three so much skill ah, you know, that's a tough one boys but uh you know get you next time right <laughs> this game sucks <laughs>